H-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with my wonderful one, Let's Dance. Here's a brief note on April styles. Spring fashions decree that the well-dressed table should wear lots of bright color. And especially smart, say experts, is a gay mold of rich, shimmering jello. Yes, sir, jello is a mighty attractive dessert. It adds to any meal a final touch of distinctive beauty and friendly charm. Whether you choose strawberry red, lime green, or any other of its six sprightly colors, you'll be delighted with the way jello dresses up the table, tempts the appetite, and leaves a feeling of grand refreshment. Jell-O is a truly delicious treat. Outstanding for its full tangy flavor. Flavor as inviting as fresh, juicy ripe fruit itself. So try some real soon. For rich, exciting goodness, there's nothing to compare with Jell-O, America's favorite gelatin dessert, now better than ever. was my wonderful one, Let's Dance, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last week, next Sunday, the Jell-O program will originate from New York City, where Paramount is holding the premiere of its new picture, Buck Benny Rides Again. So without further ado, we whisk you to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where Jack is in the throes of last-minute packing. Take it away! Creole babies walk along with rhythm in their thighs. Rhythm in their feet and in their lips and in their eyes. Where do highbrows find that kind of love that satisfies? Underneath the Harlem moon. I'm getting anxious. Rochester. Come on, boys, join in. Never mind. There's no field of cotton. Picking cotton is taboo. They don't live in cabins Rochester. like the old folks. We'll never get to New York the way you're moving. Our train leaves in a couple of hours. My trunk isn't half packed yet. Well, boys, I only got two hands. Yes, but you got a cigar in one and a sandwich in the other. <laughs> now put them down and get to work. My contract specifies one hour for lunch. You can eat and work at the same time like I do. Let's see, where did I put my hamburger? It's laying right there on your dress shirt. My goodness. Oh, well, I can wear a vest with it. Now, Rochester, take these stocks here and put them uh, in the top drawer. Boss, this trunk is so old, half the drawers won't open. You're just a weakling, that's all. Here, hold my chocolate eclair. I'll open it. Okay. Mm. There. That got it. <laughs> Woo! Look out for them bats! Oh, stop, Roger. They're not bats. They're just large moths. Chew. Chew. And that reminds me, I thought I told you to put mothballs in this trunk. I did, and they threw them back at me. <laughs> now, don't get cute. There, the socks go in here. Hey, wait a minute, Rochester. What's the matter? I told you to hold my chocolate eclair, not eat it. It's right here in my hand, boss. Look again. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't see it. Now, take my underwear and put them in this bottom... That must be Miss Livingston. Come in. I'm the man from the express company. Did you have a trunk to go to the station? Yes, but it's not ready yet. You'll have to come back. Gosh, nobody's ever ready. How do I stand it? How do I stand it? <laughs> Rather temperamental, fellow. Say, Rochester, get my blue suit out of the closet and pack it. I want to give it to my cousin Marvin when we stop uh, in Chicago. Is it that old? That suit's in good condition. It hardly shines at all. I wish my future was as bright as that. <laughs> now, Rochester, I've had enough out of you. Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Are you all set to go? Sure. 
Gee whiz, Jack, aren't you packed yet? Just about. Sit down and relax. Okay, boss. Not you. <laughs> now, let's see. I'll be in New York uh, two weeks. How many shirts do you think I ought to take along, Mary? One blue or 14 white. <laughs> Mary, I wish you'd be serious. I want to get this done. Now, what else? I hear it's pretty cold in New York. Do you think I ought to take along my spats? Yeah, and don't forget your coonskin cap. Mary, I haven't worn a coonskin cap since I portrayed Daniel Boone in our high school play. I went over very big. Nobody asked you. Well, I did. <laughs> here, Rochester, put these shirts away. Say, boss, look at this old faded newspaper I found in the bottom drawer here. Should I throw it away? No, let's see it. Hmm, San Francisco Chronicle. I wonder what I saved this for. Well, I'll be doggone. Look, Mary, look here on the amusement page. Oh, yeah. Jack Benny, big hit at Orpheum this week. I sure was. And see that picture of me holding my violin? Uh-huh. What's that stuff on your head? That's hair. <laughs> I had a pompadour in those days. Gosh, the Orpheum San Francisco. Gee, it seems like only yesterday. Yesterday? Look at this front page. Gold discovered in Alaska. Let's see that. Oh, yeah, I remember. When the news came in, they emptied the theater in two minutes. By the time I got my makeup off, you couldn't buy a shovel in the whole town. Just think, but for that, I might have been known as Nugget Jack, the Klondike Kid. Mary, can't you just see me digging for gold? No, I seem to see you burying it. Well, it's hot here, folks, this week. That's why that joke was bad. But <laughs> for a guy that was in Baltimore as long as I was, I ought to have my head examined for giving you that opening. Here, Rochester, paste this right up in my scrapbook. Okay, should I indicate your hair with an arrow? That won't be necessary. <laughs> I just want to keep the paper. Come in. Well, here I am again. Is the trunk ready yet? Not quite, young man. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> so impatient. Oh, Rochester, where's that gray suit with the stripes I sent out to be cleaned? Here it is, but your cleaner took the stripes out of it. Took the, st <laughs> took the stripes out of it? Boss, you could send a zebra to that outfit and it would come back plain. Rochester, I'd just like to send a zebra to the classy, closey cleaners and show you how wrong you are. As a rule, they're very good. I sent him a sweater last week and it came back with Lana Turner in it. Always a comedian, eh, Miss Livingston? Say, Rochester, I just happen to think, did you collect the two weeks' room rent from Mr. Billingsley, our boarder? Yes, I did, boss, but he took it back. What do you mean he took it back? Well, he didn't exactly take it. What do you mean he didn't exactly take it? How can a nice man like him know so much about African handball? <laughs> Rochester, I won't have you gambling with my boarder. Now help me close this trunk. Mary, you push on one side. Rochester, you push the other, and I'll snap the lock. All together now. <coughs> Come on, push. There. Well, that's that. It's closed. Now, Mary, I think we ought to run ahead and get it... <coughs> hmm. Uh, what were you saying, Jack? Never mind. Rochester, get a piece of rope and tie it around the trunk. And Mary, let you and I go on ahead. I want to stop at the drugstore and get some things. We'll meet you at the station, Rochester. Phone for a taxi. Okay, boss. Oh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. All set for your little trip, I see. Yes, yes. We're going to New York for a couple of weeks. I hope you won't be lonely here all by yourself. No, no. I'm happy as long as I have my pipe and a <laughs> good book to read. <laughs> That's fine. Well, Mr. Billingsley, we'll be leaving in a little while. I'd come down to the station to see you off, but I have a splitting headache. Oh, that's too bad. There it goes again. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Billingsley. Hmm, isn't he a nice fellow, Mary? Yes, but why does he always push that wheelbarrow around? He claims it's an ashtray. <laughs> Sweet guy, though. Come in. Well, is that trunk ready yet? Yes, young man, here it is. Are you happy? Trunks, trunks, trunks. My whole life is nothing but trunks. Do you ask me if I'm happy? <laughs> Gee, I just asked. Never saw anybody so high strung. Your cab's here, boss. Okay, now don't forget, Rochester. Shut off the milk, stop the paper, water the flowers, put sheets all over the furniture, 
Take Carmichael and Trudy to the pet shop and be at the station in an hour. In an hour? Yes. Boss, I couldn't do all that if I was the whole Johnson Choir. <laughs> Stop arguing. You're losing time. Come on, Mary. Never saw a guy like him, always complaining. Look, Jack, there's Ronald Coleman out in his yard. Oh, yes. I must say goodbye to him. Goodbye, Ronnie. Goodbye, Ronald. Goodbye, Mr. Coleman. That's more like it. Goodbye. <laughs> Seems a little cold toward me. I wonder what's wrong. He's probably jealous of your work in pictures. Yes, I guess you're right, Mary. That's about it. Do you mind if I break your arm? Just try it, that's all. Well, here we are. Where to, sweetheart? A union station, and don't drive too fast. Okay, sweetheart. Hmm. Get in, Mary. Right with you, sweetheart. Mary! <laughs> Afraid of night Cause I'm too romantic Moonlight and stars Can make such a fool of me You know you're much too near And I'm too romantic Wouldn't I be a sight On a bended knee I'm startled when you whisper I'll run if you should sigh I must be so careful For I'll kiss my heart goodbye You shouldn't let me dream Cause I'm too romantic don't make me fall unless it could all come true. Don't ever break my heart in two. Oh, I'm so afraid of night, cause I'm too romantic. The moon makes a fool of me You know you're much too near And I'm too romantic Wouldn't I be a sight on a bended knee I'm startled when you whisper I'll run if you should sigh I must be so careful Or I'll kiss my heart Goodbye You shouldn't let me dream But I'm too romantic Don't make me fall Unless it could all come true. Say, Jack, are we going to stop the studio and pick up the rest of the gang? No, Mary, they'll all meet us at the station. I gotta stop at the drugstore and get some things I need. There's one right ahead. Oh, yes. Driver, stop at that drugstore right there, will you? Say, I thought you wanted to go to the Union Station. I do, but I want to stop at the drugstore first. Do you mind? I'm gonna leave the meter running, sweetheart. <laughs> go ahead. That's not gonna worry me any. And I know why. Paramount is paying for this trip. <laughs> what if they are? Buck Benny rides again on the cuff. <laughs> Mary, if you don't... Stop here, driver. Okay, sweetheart. I can't understand this. I don't even know the fellow. <laughs> Wait here. We'll be right out. Let's see. I got to get some blades and, oh, yes, some shaving cream. Don't you make your own anymore? No. It lathered all right, but it made my skin turn blue. You know? <laughs> Now, where's the clerk? 
Oh, there he is. Ah, good evening, miss. What can I do for you? The Klondike kid's buying. I'm the lady known as Lou. Mary. Yes, I have quite a few things I want to get here. You see, I'm going to New York. Ah, then you first will need a railroad ticket. Well, I came in here to buy some toilet articles. That may be right, but you cannot go to New York without a ticket. I know I can't go to New York without a ticket. <laughs> but I've got one. You don't think I'd come to a drugstore to buy a railroad ticket, do you? Why not? Oh, fine. <laughs> Now, look, mister, we haven't much time. I just want to get some shaving cream and some razor blades. Very good indeed. Shaving cream, razor blades, and a razor. I have a razor. Let's see it. <laughs> Believe me, I own one. <laughs> For goodness sake, you don't expect me to carry my razor around in my pocket. You got your toothbrush there. Not a toothbrush. That's a small whisk broom. I always carry it when I travel. How much are you going to charge Paramount for brushing yourself off? Oh, Mary, to hear you talk, you think I was the tightest guy in the world. I don't know whether it's win, place, or show, but you're in the money. Mary, I'm trying to buy something. Hey, sweetheart, the meter's still running. Okay, who cares? Now, come on, mister, give me a tube of shaving cream. Why don't you buy an electric razor? I don't want an electric razor. Now, look, I will demonstrate. Oh. You hold it in your hand like this. Click, Click. first around the face. Oh, look, I, I, that's not what I want, you see. Now, under the nose. Tick, tick, tick. Look, I, I don't want that. Around the face again. Yeah, that's very close. And there you are. Well, that's, that's pretty fast, all right. But look, I'll just take a tube of plain shaving cream. Then you do not want an alarm clock. An alarm clock? Who asked for an alarm clock? With him, you don't have to ask. Look, mister, I don't want an alarm clock. One moment, clock. I will demonstrate. Look. For instance, I'm home asleep. Now, wait a minute. I'm not interested don't in an alarm Don't wake me up. Look, mister, I'm trying to catch a train. Then suddenly, ding, 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 ding. All right, now what happened? Nothing, I didn't hear it yet. Oh. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. It I'm... rings again. <laughs> I'm awake. Now, look, mister, it's all very interesting, but I'm trying to get some shaving. Hey, sweetheart, it's up to $1.70. Let it click. I'm not through here yet. Now, for the last time, mister, do I get my shaving cream or not? Then you don't want a radio. A radio? Uh, look, I will demonstrate. Click, and suddenly... <laughs> oh, come on, Mary, let's get out of here. What about the shaving cream? The heck with the shaving cream, let's go. Oh, boy, what a screwy guy. Well, come on, you can get what you need at the station. They've got a drugstore there. Oh, that's right. Okay, driver, Union Station. Hey, the meter is up to 420 now, sweetheart. 420? Why, just a minute ago, you told me it was $1.70. After 6 o'clock, there's a cover charge. Oh. <laughs> well, if you haven't got a floor show, I'm going to hit you right over the head. Now, drive on.
right, buddy. There's the Union Station. What do you want to do? Drive right through it? Okay, okay. That'll be five sixty. Here's six dollars. Keep the change. Thanks. So long, sweetheart. Goodbye, sugar plum. <laughs> Make a note of that, Mary, to Paramount, $6 for taxi cab. Don't forget, it costs a nickel to call it. That's right, make it 6.05. I hope Rochester got here with my trunk. I want to check on that the first thing. She is certainly a big crowd here. I don't see any of our gang around. Oh, don't worry, we still have plenty of time. All aboard! Train leaving on track seven for Albuquerque, Dodge City, Kansas City, Chicago, and New York. Board! Hey, wait a minute, you. That train doesn't leave for a half hour yet. Well, I can practice, can't I? <laughs> hmm, he must be new here. Now, uh, now, where in the world is Rochester? Peekaboo, boss! Whoop! <laughs> Rochester, don't sneak up behind me. You know how nervous I am. My trunk get here all right? Part of it. Good. Part of it? What do you mean, part of it? Well, we were driving down Wiltshire Boulevard when all of a sudden the trunk bounced off. My trunk bounced off? Did it fly open? Like my mouth at a chicken dinner. <laughs> well, it's your fault, Rochester. I'll bet my things are a mess. You know that high silk hat you always wear with your evening clothes? Yes. Well, a truck ran over it. Oh, my goodness. My high silk hat? It's a beanie now. <laughs> Go on it. Well... Mary, mark down $15 on my expense account for one high silk hat. You can have it blocked for 75 cents. What are you trying to do, make a cheapskate out of Paramount? <laughs> mark down what I tell you. All aboard! Train leaving on track seven for Albuquerque, Dodge City, Kansas City, Chicago, and Alaska! <laughs> Alaska? I've given you another chance, Klondike. <laughs> Oh, button your lip. I got a zipper there. Quiet. <laughs> hmm, what a smart alley. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Dennis. Oh, hello, Dennis. And your mother's with you. How do you do, Mrs. Day? Good evening. Now, Mr. Benny, I am leaving Dennis in your care. Yes. So I want you to see that he's a good boy in New York and gets to bed every night at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Better make that nine so Jack won't have to stay up so late. <laughs> Listen, Mary, when I get to New York, I'll be stepping out plenty. Well, I'll be the life of the party. Oh, you and Georgie Jessel. <laughs> Don't worry about me, Mary. Come along, Dennis. I'll buy you a Dick Tracy book to read on the train. Oh, boy, Dick Tracy. Bang, 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 bang. Take that, lefty. <laughs> Relax, Dennis. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Day. I'll see you when we get back. Goodbye. I'm thirsty, Jack. I'm going over and get a Coca-Cola. Okay, you can put that on my expense account, Mary. I'll treat you. See you later. <laughs> Your trunk's on the train, boss. Everything's all set. Good. Now, we arrive in New York at Grand Central Station Tuesday morning. The minute we get there, I want you to see that the trunk is brought immediately to my hotel. I'm getting off at 125th Street and have breakfast. Rochester, you don't have to get off at Harlem the first thing in the morning. Oh, yes, I do, boss. She's got the waffles on already. <laughs> well, all right, but you better be at my hotel by noon. The same day? Yes, the same day. And I want you... Oh, hey, Don. Don. Be with you in a minute, Jack. What were you saying, Mother? I said I want you to be a good boy in New York. Well, I will, Mama. And if they don't serve genuine jello in your hotel... No. I want you to go right down to your neighborhood grocer and buy some. I will, I will. Oh, what so flavor, happy. Mama? Any flavor. They're all delicious. All right, Don. Come on, come on. Just a minute, Jack. Is there anything else, Mama? Yes. Always look for the, the big, big red, red letters, letters on the box. box. <laughs> Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Mama. Gee, she's a sweet little lady. Well, Don. Don, aren't you thrilled about going to New York? Oh, I sure am, Jack. And I'll bet you are, too, with the world premiere of your picture on Broadway. Yes, sir. There'll be plenty of excitement. Hello, Don. Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, did you get your Coca-Cola, Mary? Yeah, five cents. You better put that down for stamps. It sounds more business-like. <laughs> well, we're all here but Phil. I wonder where he is. I just passed him. There he is talking to his mother. Well, everybody's mother is down here today. Hey, Phil. Be right with you, Jackson. 
Well, Mom, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Take care of yourself. I will, son. Now, remember what I told you. While you're in New York, stay in the groove and don't get off the beam. <laughs> But, Mom, mm. Mom, I got a jive, don't I? Yes, but don't cut too many rugs. Your chops is beat now. <laughs> chops is beat? What kind of talk is that? Okay, Mom, I'm help. I'll watch myself. Now you're cooking with Dad. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Well, I got to run along now. Goodbye, Mom. So long, Bob. <laughs> Bob? Well, I'll be darned. Hiya, Jackson. Are you all set to hop that rattler for the big town? All set, Phil. Well, we better get going. All aboard. Train leaving on track seven for Albuquerque, Dot City, Kansas City, Chicago, and, uh, and, uh, New York. What's the matter with me? <laughs> Oh, stop with those false alarms. That's not a false alarm, Jack. Look at all the people going through the gate. Oh, yeah. Come on, everybody. Our train's leaving. Okay, Jack. Come on, Phil. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Oh, Jack. What? Jack, you know what? You forgot to get your shaving cream. Oh, that's right. I did, but I've still got time. Here's the drug counter right over there. See you on the train, fellas. Hey, buddy, I'm in a big hurry. Uh, give me a tube of shaving cream. Shaving cream? Yes, yeah, shaving cream. You've got it, haven't you? I don't know. Hey, Eddie, have you got any shaving cream? I don't know. Hey, Phil, have we got any shaving cream? I don't know. Hey, Sam! Never mind. Let it go. I'll get it in New York. Hey, wait for me. Wait for me. Hold the train. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one good flavor certainly deserves another. And that's why Jell-O's grand new dessert, Imperial Peach Mold, combines two delightful flavors, rich tangy orange Jell-O and delicious sun-ripened sliced peaches. What's more, you can have it on the table in just a jiffy. Merely make up a package of orange Jell-O using a combination of hot water and peach juice. Chill until slightly thickened, and then mix in a cup full of peaches themselves and mold. Even though it's still months ahead of the season, you can enjoy peaches that are actually orchard fresh by making the swell dessert with bird's eye quick frozen sliced peaches. Or if bird's eye sliced peaches are not readily available, use canned sliced peaches instead. Either way, you'll find Imperial Peach Mold one of the most delectable desserts you ever tasted. Because there's no doubt about it, it's a wonderful treat when these two meet. Juicy yellow golden peaches and bright brilliant orange jello. number of the 28th program in the current Jello series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from New York City. Well, Mary, we're on our way. Are you excited? Yeah. You know, Jack, I was just wondering, it's going to be cold in New York. Do you think Paramount would mind if I bought a mink coat? No, but it would kill me. Good night, folks. <laughs> Part of the drug clerk on tonight's program was played by Mr. Fritz Feld. And here's more fun and enjoyment for you. Tune in every Tuesday night for another swell half hour of Jell-O entertainment, the famous Aldrich family. See your local paper or a movie and radio guide for time and station. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>